Hey guys, we are going into Behold the Dark Calamity. Um, the first clear here, and uh, just to note, um, the, the sections of this video were out of order. Uh, I think in the very last section I uh, mentioned that the mission is five turns or less. It's actually four turns or less. Um, so the subsequent videos are going to be a four-man team for that mission then a five-man team within four turns so but anyway um for the first clear we're just gonna blow the boss up uh it's always satisfying to just destroy jp content with uh overpowered glux units so here's our all mission four man uh four turns or less cleared no ko's so ibarra is here um I forget if her LB fills if she starts in shift, so we're just starting in base and um, then shifting and doing her shifted LB. Uh, it's an instrument and gun build just to take advantage of the Igni and Louise's weapon and perils. And other than that, she's built for LB damage and um, beast killer. So actually, let's get full LB damage on her. Uh, we'll just go with whatever, just straight 50% LB, uh, 55 from this, but there's that, just to keep it a little more accessible. Uh, Olivera, starting in the base form, shift form, uh, high MP, high beast killer, high LB damage, um, 220 beast, 300 LB, and... Lots of MP, so there's that. Here's his gear. I forget if I showed in his own card. Uh, yeah, Ybarra has uh, Louise's card. Yigni, um, he'll be in shift form the whole fight. Uh, just a uh, chainer. He actually does a decent amount of damage here. So gun to take advantage of Louise's gun in peril. And lots of Beast Killer, his own card. So, 250 Beast. And Louise, uh, Passive Provoke Evading. Uh, the boss does, all he does is physical attacks. Some are AoE, some are single target. Um, we're killing on turn two. All he does on turn one is single target physical. So, um, yeah, Louise will be eating that. And then shift form, just a uh, non-elemental gun build with high magic, high-ish magic. So full beast. And her own card. And uh, I would prioritize, if you don't have an EX3 Louise, prior, I would prioritize the card on Ibarra and just put some of their high magic card on Louise. But... Anyway, this is kind of a high-end clear anyway, so the assumption is you're probably going to have, if you're able to replicate this in EX3 units, but anyway. Uh, Louise, this turn, she is going to break. Um, that's the other thing about the boss, it can only be spirit broken, so uh, yeah, anyway. So that's why uh, we're bringing mages. I know it can be done with, you know, current meta physical damage dealers with no attack, uh, defense break, but anyway. So, uh, yeah, spirit break, uh, stat buff, uh, killers, and whatever else really, as long as you don't imbue her or anything. Yigni, this turn, is, is going to put up his magic field, uh, dark imbue for Louise, um, that's really all we're getting out of him. I know we could do an impair. Uh, oh, wait. Study darkness for his own dark amp. And then whatever else. Ibarra this turn is going to shift. And she is weakening appeal just for a magic buff on herself. And then Olivera this turn is just going to inspire in finale for the dark amp, dark in peril, and. Uh, instrument in peril. 
All right, now it's time to kill. So Oliver is gonna shift an LB. Ibarra is gonna LB. Igni is going to soul projection four times and then cap with the seal of doom. Louise is gonna shift. And we will disarming three times and then neutralizing. And we'll send uh, the back row first and then let the chain build a little and then send the front row. So we'll see who did what here. I had recorded this earlier, but apparently deleted my recording. So I think Yigni and Oliveira carried it for the most part. Um, yeah, they, they did again, apparently. I guess Ibarra wasn't too far off from them, but it's kind of sad that Yigni outdamaged Oliveira here. Um, really want to see Oliveira get the magic weapon variants, but anyway, so there's that, and, um, the following videos should be more accessible budget runs, but like I said, there's a certain satisfaction with just blowing a boss up, but anyway, I'll see you guys in a minute. All right, we are going back into Behold the Dark Calamity, um, for a more budget accessible clear so this one is going to be uh just party four or less we're not going to hit the four turn limit mission but uh there's an assumption that you have um a, a strong chaos wave awaken dark aligned chainer um or just a strong yeah um or just a strong mage um you, you don't even need that, honestly. You just need two Chaos Wave Awaken Chainers. Uh, the boss has, um, yeah, again, um, no more than 200% resist to any elements. So with an Imperil, um, you can use any element. Honestly, it just might take a little longer. And it doesn't even have to be Chaos Wave Awaken. It can be any Chainers, physical or magic. Um, magic is preferred because it can be spirit broken, but any, anyway, um, for this clear, we're using just Yigni, uh, we're going to be chaining his non-elemental base form, Chaos Wave Awaken skill. We're not doing the dark in the shift form just because it, uh, consumes his HP. So we have a dark weapon on him, just high magic, high beast killer. And, and he can quad chain. So there's that. Vaughn, uh, we're just using as a chain bot with Irony's ring on. You can either put him on an Esper with an, uh, with some sort of Aga skill learned. Um, like Anima here has Dark Go learned. Um, we have him equipped with Thundaga. We'll probably cast Thundaga, uh, just to build the chain faster, the dual element chaining and all that. Um, if you're pairing uh, somebody with a triple caster, um, he needs a fourth dark magic skill equipped or learned on the Esper. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I do want to... We're going to start Yigni in the shift form with some auto faith. just for a little buffing. But again, this is, if you're okay with just putting your game on auto repeat after you get everything set up, then really you don't even need auto faith or D shell or anything. But this is the route we're going. So yeah, there are a lot of sources of, you know, a lot of Espers have a uh, Chaos Wave Awakened Aga skill learned. There's some equipment that gives you Aga skills, a lot of materials too. So it can just be any any number of sources to 
chain. And the, re the reason I say, you know, Chaos Wave Awaken chaining is because most mages can chain that. So, uh, Rundo is here just as a physical cover tank uh, with evasion. We've got him dual wielding with Aurora Scarf because his and some counter materia like Seifer's Coat, um, counter proof of talent to increase his counter chances. He restores, his normal attack restores uh, 100 MP to the whole party. So that's the reason we're doing that, just so we don't have to worry about MP on our chainers. So here's his gear. Um, yeah, it doesn't even need that, to be honest. And one of, I'm trying to think of if he is provoking. I want to say he is just innately, but really, um, since he's covering physical, uh, um, any AOE attacks, he's going to cover. So really doesn't matter who your provoker is, to be honest. And then in the uh, last slot, all that matters is dual cast and an Esper with uh, D shell and Imperil learned. So uh, in this case, we're using Diablos. You can uh, use Ramu too. So. So all we are doing is we're just quad casting a study of darkness. Oh wait, no, sorry. Started in the shift for the auto faith. We are just going to cast energy calibration with the Igni and then quad Thundega with Vaughn. Runda is going to cover. And Veritas of the Water is going to dual cast D shell and imperil. So we're gonna D shell and imperil first and then send the chainers. And at this point, we should be able to just uh, hit repeat and just let it run. So yeah, the, the boss is pretty harmless. I mean, it's just more or less a damage test. So here we can see Runda is countering with MP refill. So I know turn one, single target physical um, with a defense break, but that, you know, it doesn't have accuracy. Everything can be evaded. And the Igni skill stacks. I'm not sure how high it stacks, but... So, yeah, there's some AoE, or... Maybe it's not AoE, but Runda's covering it. <clears throat> Turn three, more of the same. So, yeah, he's just topping everyone off. Lots of counters. It's slow, again... The idea here is to just set it up and hit repeat and let it run. Obviously, this will go quicker if you pair Yigni or whoever up with a stronger mage. But you can just let this run for however long you need to. So we're doing, what, about 90 million a turn. And the boss has 2.1 billion. So... It'll take a minute, but again, this is just to get it done. So here's the end of the rotation. He does need you. I think that's the end of the rotation. But yeah, I mean, with, with the recent up, update to Meteor, um, it's a physical skill now. It, it can be covered and evaded. So it's really pretty harmless if you have a full evasion tank. More physical stuff. 
Dirty Harmless. But yeah, that's it. Um, not really a whole lot to it. Um, I'm probably going to cut the video here and uh, yeah, I'm just going to cut the video, let it run, and I'll jump back in whenever it's getting close to being done, just to show, you know, show that it, uh, you know, this strategy will get it done. And then we'll probably, fo we'll follow up with, uh, you know, a five-man team just to try to get it done within the turn limit. So anyway, we'll talk to you in here in a sec. All right, we are jumping back into the fight. Here we are on turn 22. Um, we've just been repeating the whole time. So we should kill it in a couple turns. But, and again, I mean, there are quicker ways to do this, I'm sure. But if you don't have the strongest units, you can do this literally with any units. Um, you just need two chainers, and I mean, you could take 500 turns and just still get your four man clear. And this is again, literally just to show like how harmless this boss is and how easy it is. I mean, Renda's a free unit. Hopefully, you have um, the gearing to get 100% evasion. And some, you know, counter activation skills. Um, let's see. I know Seifer's coat probably isn't that necessarily accessible, but there are plenty of other counter materials available. Um, and honestly, uh, having Aurora Scarf or the, you know, normal attacks hit twice probably isn't even necessary to... Um, to keep your, to sustain your MP. But, um, yeah, hopefully, I mean, counter, I'm not, I, yeah, it's a, what, three or four star TMR, and Proof of Talent is a three or four star TMR from Chloe. Um, yeah. So, I know Locks Dagger and Crimson Butterfly are seven star STMRs, but... Um, there are other ways to get him to dual wield and still get full evasion. But the rest of this is just, you know, espers, um, the dual wield is another three or four star, uh, TMR. Literally nothing else on him. Veritas at the waters isn't even important. Uh, and just any unit with, you know, some MP enough to be able to cast those. Um, yeah, again, Irony's Ring is Trial Reward. Um, Thundaga, I think, is craftable. Or, oh, here it's a three or four star TMR. And just your uh, Equip Whips. Um, I think that's from the storyline. You can get it. Um, valued Memories. Yeah, that's a seven star STMR. Uh, University Eater was from a trial, um, another STMR here, but there are other, you know, ways to, in, you know, other dark weapons you can put on him, but anyway, so yeah, I mean, a, a lot of that is just more for damage, um, it could just be literally any dark weapon, or even a, uh, just a dark skill. So this should be the end of the fight. Yeah. So four man clear, no deaths. Um, yeah. There it is. So anyway, um, yeah, I'll find a accessible unit to help uh, get this done within five turns. That. Um, yeah. So. Maybe we can get, so we got the four man clear mission done there and we'll be back for a five turn clear here in a sec. 
All right, guys, we are going back in one last time to behold the Dark Calamity. Uh, this turn, this time, it'll be a five-man team within five turns. So here's the team. We swapped out. Um, so Vaughn for an actual mage, but not a highest-end mage. But here's her gear, and she is at... 200 Beast, um, yeah, Louise's vision card, obviously, um, I would say bring, uh, Louise if you, you know, want and you have her, but I'm just trying to illustrate that you don't need all, you know, premium units to clear this, um, so her own SCMR, again, Irony's Ring, uh, from an event, I think Sorceress's Choker was from an event too, so, it doesn't even really contribute that much. It's just a decently high magic materia. Um, we do have um, seven star STMR here. Uh, yeah, there's that. Um, the rod is from an event. Uh, some other seven star STMRs and event materia for the killers. Uh, Yigni, this time, he's just going to stay in the shift form the whole fight. Um, again, borrowing an STMR from, um, yeah, Dark Fina and Saul, but actually he doesn't even need this materia anymore, but he's at Max Beast Killer. And Saul's vision card. So Aerith is here. Uh, in the shift form, uh, she has Obsidian Breaker just for a little better spirit in peril. And that's free from the story event. Bahamut Synergy from 5 star base. TMR just for some Esper fill. Uh, she is on Lakshmi. We're going to uh, be using Yigni's uh, self damaging abilities. So we're going to summon Lakshmi in there at some point to heal uh, him up. Um, same gearing on. Um, Actually, we're going to take that off just to speed the clear up a little bit. So, same gearing on Runda. And we're bringing Rain for a Beast Killer. He should be free uh, for everyone. And didn't need dual cast. He's not on an Esper. We're just going to be popping a Beast Killer on turn two. So, we'll get into it. Uh, yeah, want to save the Beast Killer until... Uh, and until Yigni is doing actual damage. So it's only a three turn duration. So this turn, Rain can guard. Ronda is going to uh, cover. And again, Ronda's free from the story in season four. Aerith is going to LB for a stat buff. And we're going to try this without her rod and barrel. And I mean, you. Yeah, I know. Technically, she was free, but not everyone might have her if you join the game a little af like after that event. So just hopefully you have a decent buffer. Um, someone who will buff over 300%. But um, an alternative might be to bring uh, Realm just for her Rod and Peril. And just use Igni's own buffs. But... Anyway, uh, we should get this in turn four, or four turns with this team, maybe five, so. But anyway, Yigni is going to, uh, let's see. Soul Projection, Study of Darkness, Soul Projection, and then um, Vitality Fountain. Actually, does he have, do any of these just straight up buff his magic?
doesn't look like it. No, so, I mean, if you're keeping him in the shift form the whole fight, then he would need uh, an external buff. Unless you start in the base form, but at any rate, we're just going to go with this. So, we'll do study of darkness, soul projection, study of darkness. Actually, scratch that. Soul, pro yeah, soul, study, soul, and then vitality fountain, put up the magic field, dark fina is going to dark earth three times and then yeah just uh whatever ultima i guess This turn, Runda's just going to repeat once he stops countering. <clears throat> so we'll reload Runda. We're going to just quad Darkra with Dark Fina. Yigni is going to quad cast uh, Soul Projection. And we'll just go ahead and summon Lockstein here. Uh, we'll try it without a Rod in Peril and see how it goes. Rain is going to Beast Breaker. So again, really, I mean, Aerith can be any buffer, um, just to buff magic. Um, Rain, it was free. He's buffing Beast Killer. Rondo is free. He's just uh, full of a covering. And uh, Obsidian Bracer for the Imperil or the Spirit Break, and then just some strong chainers. Some strong dark aligned chainers. All right, so how much was that? 654. So it'd be eh, four turns of chaining without a Rod Imperil and a strong buff. Or a moderate buff and a rod in peril would probably you know, do four turns too, I would think. And again, I mean, the boss is only 80% spirit broken at this point. I believe it should be only 80%. So this turn, uh, Aerith and Rain are pretty much done for the fight. Um, Runda's cover should last the rest of the fight, so we can just repeat these two. So it's still, oh uh, yeah, Yigni skill is uh, Yigni skill imperils dark. So shouldn't have to worry about the dark imperil anymore. All right, there you go, four turns. And again, I mean, if that had gone into turn five. Uh, you know, that would have been within the turn limit and we still should have killed it. But anyway, um, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, within five turns, it's five man, so you're missing that mission. But I already showed the other uh, four man team for clearing it. So, anyway, thanks for watching. Hope it helped. Later.